and gave Bama's defense problems. All right, let's end with the Cowboys. They're taking on the Giants in Week 17. Dallas locked into the four seed with their NFC East title, but they will reportedly still trot their stars out onto the field. See, what do the Cowboys need to shore up now on this team heading into the playoffs? Well, you got to be concerned, especially when you look at the teams in the NFC. You have to be concerned about that offensive line and the lack of pack pass protection. That's either Dak recognizing when he's hot and he's got to get rid of the ball or the offensive line pass protecting better than they have throughout this season. Besides that, their passing game. So for me, all the emphasis should be, how do I improve my passing game? How do I become more consistent? How do I get Amari Cooper starting involved? Because that offense is different. But ultimately, if you can't protect your quarterback in these playoffs, these are the two things I think are the most significant changes that Dallas are improvements that they need to address headed into week number 17. If they're going to play Dak Prescott, which they are, they, they've got to be doing it to try to get something out of it. And what I would hope they're trying to get something, what they're, I would hope they're trying to get out of it, I should say, is some type of downfield passing. It's really hard in this league to go 20 of 25 passing in a game and have it not be a good game. And that's what it was for Dak this past week in Tampa Bay. He was 20 of 25, didn't throw a pick, didn't fumble the football. And I still thought it was a pretty poor game because on those 20 completions, they got 161 yards. Like, I know that Dak can be accurate within an eight-yard window. I know he can dump it off to either Cole Beasley on a quick slant or Zeke coming out of the backfield. But some type of momentum with Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper on the outside, that is the only thing separating Dallas from being, eh, it's a nice story, it's a, it's a decent team heading in the playoffs, and a real threat because every other part of their team, other than their passing game, and it's the offensive together. line plays a part of that, of course, is playing very well, their defense and their running game. But how many games this season have we come out of it, maybe one, that big game with Amari Cooper, and said, Dak looked good, he was throwing downfield, he was accurate, they really opened up the offense. I mean, this has been the thing we've taken week to week with this Dallas team. It doesn't seem like they're going to figure it out in one week heading into it's the playoffs. It's an ongoing theme. This is what they're going to have to do to improve. If you ask us, Dallas, if they lose in the playoffs, you ask us, oh, what is Dallas going to do 2019? They need to improve their passing game. They need to be able to protect their quarterback. <laughs> Dak Prescott's got to be able to grow right. going into year number four. That's what we do in this league. It's no different than Ben Simmons learning how to shoot the basketball. These guys have to improve on this. If they are, that's a good player. He's not a great player. And the reason why is because his game is limited. Dallas, they got a good roster, not a great roster, because of their inability to be able to balance out that defense with some big plays and the continuity of a consistent passing game. <laughs> Accuracy is something you can work on. Is 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 sort of opening up the game a little, throwing down. Is that something that's in his wheelhouse to improve it's on? It's no different than shooting. You okay. got to be able to earn that respect to be able to throw the ball 40 times, make a few shots from five feet, 10 feet, 15 right. feet. You got to. You have to earn that from the coaches when they trust you. Because the longer the quarterback has the ball in his hands the more risk the offense and the offensive coordinator is taking. You have to be able to win their trust over. That's one thing I learned at Ohio State. Always has been a running institution. They told us, you're going to have to, as a wide receiver, you're going to have to force us to throw you the ball by winning the trust in practice in the limited times that you do have. That is the challenge to the Cowboys. And that's why that Colts game was such a stomach punch for them. Is he Dak threw the ball 54 times in that Eagles game, mostly in that fourth quarter and overtime. And so in that Colts game, now they some of it was by necessity because they were trailing. The second most times he's thrown it all year was that Colts game. And it was awful. So then all of a sudden they, they, they drew it back down. It's like, okay, we're gonna throw, you're going to throw it 20, 25 times. Make sure you don't kill us. We trust our defense and our running game to win this football game. But I... We, he has, I, Amari is a legitimate number one, and Michael Gallup is emerging as a rookie, as a legitimate deep threat. And I know that Dak can throw the play action pass deep. Like, maybe he doesn't have that great deep out, but I know he can throw over the top deep, a, a, at least at an adequate level. They're going to have to make some of those plays to upset some teams in the playoffs. Maybe they can win their home playoff game against likely Seattle. It's, it's almost assuredly who they would play in the first round without that. But if they're going to actually upset someone on the road, they're not going to be able to do it in a 17-13 win. All right, let's move on to the Vikings. They have a simple playoff scenario, win and they're in, but that is much easier said than done. Minnesota hosts a very good Bears team on Sunday who are slated to play all their stars. A lot of eyes on Kirk Cousins. The Vikings quarterback was guaranteed $84 million this offseason for exactly this type of game. Here is Cousins on what's on the line Sunday. 
But it's not complicated. I want to win. We want to win. We understand what's at stake. There's no magic formula. There's no button you can push or hours you can put in to suddenly snap your fingers and guarantee a win. So you do all you can. Give everything you have. Uh, there have been plenty of games this year where I've given everything I have and we don't come out on top and I don't have a great game. But there have also been plenty of games where I do that exact same process and it's more than good enough and I played a very high level and we played a very high level. So um, you, know, you just have to you know, be the best team that night. All right, CC, let's break down uh, this game plan just a little bit. What do Kirk Cousins and the offense need to do if they are going to pick apart this Bears defense? Well, it seems like every time you talk about the Vikings, all they talk about is Kirk Cousins. And you mentioned it in the lead-in, 84 million. Ever since then, that's all people are, are, are talking about. This is not a Vikings team that was dependent upon their quarterback. This organization, they got, they've done well in the draft. They've their limited participation in for, um, free agency. They have developed a lot of good players on the team. We never mentioned the defense. Mike Zimmer, he's a head coach. He cut, cut his teeth in this league by defense coordinating. That defense has not been consistent. Started off the season very, very bad. The offensive line, which is the worst unit on the team, hadn't been supported by a consistent running game. We should have more conversations about the Vikings defense. Are they leading this team? Because that's where all their money is. All right, you talk about Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is one of the few guys on the offense getting paid like that. All their money, for the most part, is on that defense. You can look up and down the roster. Look at their defensive front. Look at their linebackers. Look at their corners and their safety. All of them are paid a premium because they have played on a Pro Bowl level. And then you bring in Kirk Cousins. The last two games is more of a true snapshot of what this team should look like. They've supported a quarterback by running the ball 56% of the time since they had to fire someone. So their overall philosophy, I believe at this point, is the only time that matched up with the head coach and the organization as far as what they're going to do. They got an outstanding defense. They have to play to that defense. You have to try to control the clock. And then you can run some play action, two-man routes with the great re receiver tandem that you do have. So for me, the conversation shouldn't be centered around Kurt Cousins because the team was not put together that way. Well, and the defense this year, just Despite the poor start, they're third in the league in yards. They're the number one third down defense, the number one red zone defense, the number one sacking defense. If you care about the points, which is what Coach Mangini says, that's the most important stat. They're seventh, which is down from second last year. But the defense hasn't been the as dominant as was last season, but I don't think they've been losing games this year because the defense has been killing them. They were losing games this year because they had such a skewed run-pass run ratio. They fired their offensive coordinator because of it, and in my eyes, Kirk Cousins was playing a little below the level I expected him to play. I didn't think they got an all-pro quarterback. I didn't think they even got one of the five or six best quarterbacks in football. I don't think the Vikings thought that. The, the money they paid him was because he was a quarterback that hit free agency, true free agency, and that never happened. So he's going to get paid. But he's got to play well in this game. Like, that, that is true. A guy who's 4-25 and in his career against teams that finished with a winning record that we saw the, the, the last two weeks, the, the team and Kirk have played well. Kirk's played very well when supported by a running game. But against bad football teams, this is a win and you're in game for a team that last year won 13 games. Fair or not, if he doesn't play well and they lose, the scrutiny is going to be on him. And that is not unique to the Vikings. That is across the league, that if a team underachieves and a, the, the passing game is supposed to be a major part of their offense, and while the, most of their talents on defense, they did give Stephon Diggs a, great, a big contract, and Thielen is playing at a high, very high level. They just have him on a bargain contract. They do have talent on offense. They have a bad offensive line. I think Dalvin Cook's a good player. I know Diggs and Thielen are good players. I know that the tight end, when healthy, had, had, has been a good player. Like I, So if they don't win this game, C, do, and they're off in struggles, it's going to be fair to point some fingers at the quarterback. Yeah, you need to point at the defense, too, though. They are going against Chicago Bears. Sure. Okay, they are. So, yes, Kirk Cousins, would you like to see a better record against winning teams? Absolutely. Even with the Vikings, you'd like to go see that. But the rest of the team was participating in those games, too. The defense was not good. If you look at the teams with the winning record, look at the defense's rating against those teams compared to against the other teams because those numbers are significantly different. So in those teams that had winning records, they weren't a top 10 defense. So they have not been able to gel together. Yes, we're going to talk about the quarterback, but the number one thing was he was a free agent. Sam Bradford got, hmm, 
Got 20 million a year. Oh, right? he got 20 million to be Sam to Bradford. play two games. Okay, in Arizona. So sure. we need to measure all the things that we say based on. There's a lot of people out there making money, the, the, but it doesn't matter if you give a quarterback a hundred million. If you don't invest in that offensive line, if you don't run the football, it's going to be hard to be able to get your value out of whatever you pay that quarterback. And, and uh, listen, I, I think we do some like weird like pocket watching with NFL players a lot. Like he he's paid because he he gambled on himself. He took the free agent tag. He turned down multiple contracts, and he said, "I'm not going to get hurt. I'm going to play well, and I'm going to hit the lottery." And by the way, in two years, might hit it again because they can't franchise him. He's going to hit true free agency again. I that. That's not to me a big part of the math. If he would have, I'd feel the same way about him if he was making 24 million instead of 28 million or 27 million. What is part of the math is I think this team is underperformed. I think Kirk Cousins had an opportunity on the road against New England, on the road against Seattle to play a good game. Didn't. Now he has another opportunity on or at home against the Bears to get his team into the playoffs. He does that. He erases a lot of the questions that have been attached to him this year. If he doesn't, even against a very good Bears defense, those questions are going to be as loud as ever. I don't believe that. I think that Kirk Cousins, even if the Vikings are able to win this game, because who Kirk Cousins is, it's always. When he was drafted behind RG3, there was always question marks. Why did they draft him? Then they put him into the lineup. He won the starting job. Well, man, should he be the starter? Then he threw for 4,000 yards. Oh, he should be better than that. Then they franchise him. Why are they franchising him? Why are they paying him that amount of money? Then he played well again, threw for 4,000 yards Again, then the Vikings, he was totally a free agent. He's the only quarterback of that kind that has reached total free agency. The Vikings gave him a great contract. But we don't talk about the other guys making money either. So for me, the Vikings have not had the glue as far as the units, offense, defense, and special teams, and the philosophy of the head coach all together at one time. All right, let's take a break. Leave it there. Coming up, do the Pats' Super Bowl run rely solely on home field advantage? Talk Patriots next on First Things First.